It's an artist's life today on Max Magazine. Artists spend endless hours creating works that express who they are and the way they see the world. And it's a beautiful world in their minds and their works. Hello and welcome to another edition of Max Magazine. I'm your host, Brad Grass, and on today's episode, we're going to meet some individuals who are hardwired to create in the most artistic of ways. And one of those guys is Mark Sexton. We're at his house right now. Come on in. There he is, Mark. Renowned Saskatchewan artist, Mark Sexton, inviting us into his home. Mark, how you doing? Brad, good to see you. This guy has amazing works on canvas, but, but not only that, you're famous for these beautiful themed hand-carved chess sets. One of them, uh, the Saskatchewan themed one. Oh, that was a beauty. We're gonna talk more about that in just a second. We're gonna go to your work area, but first we want you to meet a multimedia artist, and her name is Judy Wood. Childhood obsessions were with uh, drawing and horses and drawing horses. So I think the art and the horses have always been uh, right in my core from the very beginning. A lot of the works that I'm doing uh, with the horses these days are kind of vaguely gothic or mythological. I'll take a horse and put wings on it and put it in the clouds or put it with a wizard boy or put it uh, in a galaxy, uh, you know, there's just no end. If you've got the images one way and another in the computer, you can take them apart and recombine them endlessly. About 2002, I got my first digital SLR camera. And up to that point, I had always done the designs for the glasswork and everything I did were all from my own drawings and the drawings were from photos that reference photos that I had taken with my film camera. But once I got my first digital camera, I was totally free to learn and experiment. I could take endless shots and uh, learn uh, from my mistakes. And also at that point, that was when the uh, internet was really coming into its own and I could Google for tutorials. And if I made a mistake and had some vague idea of where I had gone wrong, I could go online and find information as to how to correct it. So that kind of, my inner photographer was born at that point and now essentially everything I do now has, uh, is photo based and has photo elements in it. Photoshop is a fabulous tool. I, uh, after I first couple of years working with my camera, I got so I could take a pretty okay, decently exposed, sharp, acceptable image of what was in front of me, but that was not really that satisfying. I knew there were other things you could do, more using the photo as a, just as the raw material for an artwork. And again, I didn't know how to get there. I knew Photoshop was the way, the magic door to the kingdom, but I didn't know anything about Photoshop, so I spent pretty well an entire winter working on teaching myself Photoshop. And uh, it was a very steep learning curve. It was uh, frustrating as heck, but I persisted. And by the end of that winter, I could pretty well uh, get to where I wanted to go. And it's ongoing. I'm still learning more things all the time, but I find it a very, very satisfying process. I got kind of frustrated with the uh, ivory tower elitist aspects of the uh, art community and that was around the university in the late 60s and early 70s doing anything that was representational or realistic was really frowned upon. And uh, one of the things I always remember and still smile about is uh, Otto Rogers, who was one of my art instructors at the time, very seriously one day saying to us, uh, art students that if you want to have a career in art, whatever you do, don't get involved with horses. I 
I just kind of find it ironic that now I make my living doing horse art and spending all my time either at barns or in my studio. Uh, my daughter started riding a few years before I did and uh, I was spending a lot of time at barns waiting to pick kids up at stables and people found out that I was an artist and wanted to know if I could do a stained glass piece of their horse. And again, going back to my uh, art school brainwashing, I had to say, well, you know, if it's got a horse in it, it isn't really art. And then I thought, you know, that's crazy. Leonardo and a lot of the classical masters had lots of horses and did them very well and they seemed to be considered to be artists. So that kind of opened the little uh, door in my uh, brain that let me kind of come out of the box stall and, and allow myself to do horse art. I guess they had their reasons for thinking the way they did, but it really was not the, you know, handed down on any silver platter is the absolute truth. It's like everything else, you take what works for you and leave the rest behind. We're now entering Mark's creative area, okay? This is your workspace. But before we take you in, you know what? Let's get to know you a little bit more to those in our viewing audience who've never had the pleasure to meet you, Mark. So first off, let, let's ask you, are you from Saskatchewan? Were you born here? Where, where are you from? Uh, no, not, not originally. I was born in Wales, came over in 63. I was four years old, um, uh, settled in Burlington, Ontario. Got out of there as soon as I could. That was uh, when I was about 20. Moved to uh, Toronto, Ontario. That's where the Ontario College of Art was, and that's where I moved to Toronto to attend. Got married, had kids, and decided I didn't want to live in Toronto anymore. Regina looked like a good place, so we moved to Regina, and that was uh, ballpark 20 years ago. So I've been yeah. uh, a Saskatchewan resident for about 20 years or so. It's interesting because Saskatchewan, per capita, I think we have more artists than anywhere else in the country. They all seem to congregate uh, in the beautiful prairies and the land of the living sky. Can you tell me exactly, can you pinpoint the time where the, you got the spark, where, where the, you, you realized that you had the passion for this kind of work? Um, well, early, 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 uh, definitely. I would probably have to trace it back to uh, when I started buying my Spider-Man comics. And, Is that and, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, was, I would spend hours and hours with my tracing paper and, and tracing Spider-Man. I, <laughs> I even created a book. Uh, it was all tracing paper, and it yeah. was different scenes from different comic books. And uh, but I welded them together to make my own story. Sorry, Stanley. And uh, and uh, checks in the mail, Stan. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah, so among the other things that are lost and long forgotten. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. That, that's a message for parents out there whose uh, kids are infatuated, obsessed with comic books. Hey, there's hope. There's hope. Well, tell you what, before we get to know a little bit more about Mark, why don't you check out another incredible creative soul, a painter in the beautiful community of Humboldt. I've been an artist since I was four. I still remember doing my first oil painting with my dad in Le just east of Regina, up on the hill there. My dad was an artist, and uh, he got me my first set of paints then. And ever since that time, I, I still have that original painting of that Le uh, church I did at four. My dad still laughed about it. But my dad passed away a couple of years ago, so a very good artist, very strong, and I think that's where I got a lot of it from. My mom was a cartoonist, so. Well, I, I did my arts ed degree in Regina, and I thought, you know what, this isn't enough for me as an artist. And I thought, I'm gonna go beyond this. So uh, I signed up for a school out east. I went to Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, and I had a great, great time there. It was just awesome. Nova Scotia, Halifax changed my work. I did a lot of uh, things besides trees. I was doing a lot of details of locks and doors and old decayed wall where history would take over in my paintings. It was more in uh, like the side of a, of a ship, you know, just in harbor, just the rust or just a rusty entranceway or a door or uh, even a little fence. And then I moved on and I did my masters in Vermont after that. But I feel school is just more experiences. They can teach you the technique and stuff, but it's only what you bring as an artist, the experience of your life to that. And you know, who you meet, 
And then how do you use that for your work? And uh, what do you take that's good? What's not so good? You gotta be smart about it. You gotta be yourself and be honest about it. It's a learning process, it's a lifelong thing. And sometimes I feel I'm never there at that perfect image or I'm not getting there. The group of seven is uh, probably the greatest Canadian influence on a lot of my work because uh, they taught some of my profs or they influenced profs that taught me. Ted Godwin is one. He's a famous Canadian artist now and he did a lot of landscape and river rocks and uh, trees as well. And so he was a big influence, but you could tell a real influence in his work from Tom Thompson, group of seven artists. And then I like how thick they used the paint, how much they moved it around, how much uh, they experimented with color. And then once they put it down, they didn't touch it again. The immediacy of it, and that's an art in itself. I was out at um, Narrow Hills Provincial Park just this summer and uh, my daughters, I have twins, and they said, Dad, you gotta just lay here with us on the sleeping bag and, and look up. And So when I did lay there, I thought, yeah, it's kind of dreamy, you know? There's something about it that I like takes me away. So uh, this one's kind of dreamlike on both sides and uh, the north is still my main influence, but here I'm starting to get a little bit influenced by the prairies. And since I've moved to Humboldt, I'm starting to look at the composition of the prairies and a different way of looking at it. Now I did a few from a couple areas around Flint Flon, and that's where the rock and the trees meet the sky. It's very important to draw. Uh, I always believe that every good painting has good drawing in it, and every good drawing has painting qualities in it. So when I draw, I try to paint. When I paint, I try to draw. And I think if more people would do that, you'd find some really good results. I found the frame, uh, I'm sure it's from 1800s, uh, 19th century frame. And uh, I decided to do an eight by 10 crucifix, but modern in it. And you can't really make it out until you see the, see the piece. And it becomes very 3D the more you stare at it. I probably like painting bigger. It lets me loosen up a little bit. I'm not so tight with it. I have some small ones, but they're very tight and you're sitting here over it for, you know, maybe as long a period of time as some of these big guys. But uh, no, I like moving and I like throwing the paint. I like moving the paint around a little bit. Sometimes I have to take the piece outside because it's getting a little wild and, you know, I'm spraying the paint or I might be slopping it off the edge of the piece. But uh, when I do that, I usually set up outside and do a few like that. But to be more active, more aggressive, excellent. And momentum's important in these pieces. Sometimes you see it, you know, you see that stroke, you see that movement in the piece. And if you can get that one piece of momentum in a piece, people will sort of go, oh. And then they stand back and they take it in. Now, Mark, I see some beautiful works on canvas that, that you do here, but this caught my eye, and I mentioned this earlier. You're famous for these wonderfully carved, hand-carved themed chess sets. Now, you did a Saskatchewan themed one, and we'll talk about that one in just a minute, but, but what's this one all about? Uh, Brad, this is uh, a chess set that represents uh, a child's Christmas in Wales, uh, written by one of my favorite poets, Dylan Thomas, uh, a countryman. Um, and uh, it is, for years longer than I can remember, been one of my absolute favorite pieces by him. It is just, uh, just a beautifully, beautifully written. Mm -hmm. And I've been wanting to do a chess set on uh, this theme for years and years, and finally got around to doing wow. it. Wow, yeah. this is beautiful. Now, now you also did one, uh, the same idea, along the same idea, but with a Saskatchewan theme. And that was a while ago. Yeah, that was actually when I first moved to Regina and I had heard that the SGI had put out a call for artists. They were looking for submissions for their calendar and, it, and the theme was Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. 
and I guess they were looking for drawings and paintings and whatnot. Um, but I thought I would uh, be a little cheeky, maybe, and do something a bit different. And I rendered a chess set uh, that depicted Saskatchewan, with one side being everything that we love and are proud of about Saskatchewan. And the other side was things that, well, not quite as proud. You know, a little bit embarrassing. You know, too bad it couldn't be in a different province. I'm, this I'm guessing the good side, the king was, would have been who, Tommy Douglas? Or? Yeah, exactly. No, okay. Exactly. Yeah. And the queen, I was stuck on the queen for forever. I could not think of a suitable queen. Uh, I was thinking maybe the Mother Church, you know, the Virgin Mary or right, whatever. Right, right. And then one day I was riding my bike home from work and all of a sudden, Sandra Smuggler. Sandra Smuggler! Oh, genius! <laughs> yeah, exactly. genius oh my yeah. God, I was like, why didn't I do that before? <laughs> <I think." laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so Sandra Smurley was the queen. Uh, Sheila Cole, so I, I just love Sheila and yeah, her morning show. Yeah. Uh, she was one of the bishops on the good side. Colin Thatcher, mm, <laughs> a little embarrassing, on the bad side. Uh, the buffalo, Funny. the plight of the buffalo, the history of the buffalo, right. and the spot and all was on the bad side. Uh, pawns on both sides were RCMP. Okay. On the good side, RCMP as we know them today. Yeah. On the bad side, early, and they had oh, those little bell the hop caps. Yeah. You know, they just looked, yeah. they looked ridiculous. <laughs> and that's so why I thought, that's no, that's kind of dumb. Now, in a minute, we're going to take you into the room where all the magic happens. But first, we're going to take you to Saskatoon, meet an artist who she not only loves to create, she's got quite the passion, an incredible artist, but she uses her expertise in art to judge events as well. Take a look. Well, I've always been a painter, drawer, you know, I've, uh, horses were the number one thing. Ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to have a horse. And uh, I, even though I lived on a farm, I didn't have a pony, but if I drew it, it could be more tangible. I was inspired when I saw an Arabian one day at a horse show, and I decided I wanted one of those. So I eventually did have uh, this one gelding, and uh, so through the Arabian horse industry, I found in the magazines that there was, um, artwork, people that painted Arabian horses, and I thought, well, that's what I do. And so I followed that up, and while I was in Kentucky at the Arabian Nationals there in Louisville, I got to take a tour, and I went on the bus tour, and that, uh, at the same time, was the show of uh, the American Academy of Equine Artists, and I've never seen horse art before, and these were fabulous painters. And then I picked up a prospectus and, and entered the competition the following year. Didn't place anything, but I did get into the show and I went down for that. But it was the next year I uh, won a best of show with, that I had there. Uh, and so because I got best of show, it got published into magazines. And that's where the galleries took note of me. Uh, the Museum of the Horse in Lex Lexington, Kentucky, that was the very first show I ever had. I put together 90 five pieces of p work that was already sold to people, plus a lot of fresh new pieces. And that was my very first show. Here's the ball. Go get it. I started in TV, oh, what, that 1979, I think, is the year I joined CFQC. Um, and that was a great time. I remember that very first first day went so fast it was I was getting paid for artwork and and uh, I was very grateful to have have that job but over time after you know 20 years well 21 is what I spent there but after that time uh, I was spending a lot of time doing mouse work and that created a carpal tunnel problem but I could still paint it didn't affect my you know I didn't need that tendon so much for painting. I was able to take six months off with pay and uh, that was, I was very grateful for that. At the same time I was getting ready for the show in Kentucky, my very first show, and I asked if I could have six more months off without pay and I got that and then I had to make a decision. That, now the show had happened, I made uh, par. My salary was par as a painter as it was for television, so I thought I can leave and that's when I say goodbye. I've learned that you can, you know, the more white you add, it seems like the, well, obviously the less saturation is in your color. I'm kind of known for light right now by my contemporaries and, and buyers. Um, and that's 
that kind of came in an interesting way too. I was painting with the wildlife art group here in Saskatoon and I, we had a show in the library downtown. And one of the cameramen from CFQC came by and, and he said, oh, how come you paint so dark? And well, because my, my instruction was from the library, like I got, you know, I'm self-taught. I went to uh, the University of Saskatchewan, but it really didn't have much to do with application of paint. And I found that there was information in the library books, so I, you know, I'm learning from the masters and, you know, that they're painting quite dark and I'm just doing what they were doing, using a lot of umbers and things. And I, and I thought, geez, you know, he's right. And I can't paint dark. I was, I just became aware of Christianity at the time and I uh, thought well geez I can't I can't paint dark I have to paint light and so I made a conscious effort of putting like light on, almost in almost every I put yellow I mixed yellow with almost everything trying to come up with light and it's, so that's kind of neat that now I'm known for my light no matter what I paint and I hope to be painting more landscapes and and uh, and people and things like uh, but it's going to be about light. Like, okay, there's still the cloudy day paintings too, because that's interesting too, a little interesting challenge. Like, how can I make something where it's a cloudy day appeal to me? Like, you know, sometimes they need a little change up, but I'll always go back to shadow and light. When my last horse passed, uh, I, that was at the time when I was getting into the computer and discovered internet. And you know what? You can find horses anywhere in the world. <laughs> and so I did. And I was, lo I was looking at videos from all over uh, North America. I limited it to North America. But there was, like, there was this one little gelding. He was a yearling, and I quite liked him. He, he's, he's been a real treat. I, when I got him, it was around the same time that I became aware of the natural horsemanship that's out there, or you might call horse whispering. And I was very new to it, and it just so happened that, you know, getting a little two-year-old, well, now he's a two-year-old when I did finally get him, um, and I applied these techniques, and it's been a lot of fun. I'm, I'm just having a great time with this horse. I, uh, when you pick your right day, I can ride him without tack, you know, like it's fun to lope him without a bridle, like it's so freeing, it's quite neat. It's uh, something, it's, I feel like a kid again. So here we are. This is Mark Sexton's workspace. This is where it all happens. Now, let me ask you first, what is your preferred medium? Is it is it oil on canvas or, or what is um, it? Today it's oil on, on board. I usually work on board, uh, not so much on canvas. And, and the reason for that is because that's how we learned it in high school. Uh, in high school, actually, it's interesting. I was lucky enough, Robert Bateman was my high school art teacher uh, back in Burlington, and he always worked on board. Uh, so I just, I, it's good enough for him. <laughs> so good I, enough for you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I, I work on board, occasionally canvas. Uh, like I say, today it's oil paint. Uh, I often also enjoy working in acrylic paint. I once worked in watercolor, but I more I gave that up quite a few years ago. It just wasn't happening for me anymore. Okay. So, so yeah, strictly uh, acrylic painting and oil painting now. And what we're seeing now, this is your latest work? Uh, yeah, yeah, this one, uh, I need to get this one ready for a show. So I, I really need to get working on this to get it ready, because it's got to dry and it's got to go to the framer. So I would love to get it done today or tomorrow. You have a website. I do, ha yeah, I have a website. and uh, My friends all tell me that I really need to update it, and it's true, I believe them. I do really need to update it, and I will one day. Right. But, uh, but in the meantime, it is uh, em.ca forward slash mass, M-A-S, and that will take you to my website. Make sure you go to that website because, and correct me if I'm wrong, that's the best way to probably get in touch with you if somebody wanted to purchase one of your works of art, which I'm sure they're for sale, aren't they? Oh, absolutely, yes. Uh, yes, they are for sale. In fact, I encourage people to buy my artwork. Go to Mark's website, take a look at his work, buy his paintings. It's beautiful, beautiful works that are right there for you. In fact, I highly encourage you to not only check out Mark's work, but all of our incredible artists in this big, beautiful province. I promise you, you will be impressed. Mark, thank you so much for letting us into this world of creativity. Thanks a lot, Brad. It's great uh, great having you, and, and it was uh, really nice to talk to everybody out there. Yeah, we had a lot <laughs> of fun. And thank you for joining us on another edition of Max Magazine.
have program ideas that you'd like to see on SASTEL Max Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com. Thank <laughs> you.